Shavua Tov everybody, welcome to a new week and welcome to the Israel Brief, brought to you by Lay of the Land, hosted by me, Rolene Marks, where we take a look at those top stories making headlines every Monday to Thursday. So it has been quite a jam-packed weekend, let's take a look at those top stories. And we begin with heartbreaking news, 42-year-old patrol guard Ghen Amir was murdered in a terror attack on Saturday afternoon in Montefiore Street in Tel Aviv. Ghen was shot by a Palestinian terrorist who is uh, security forces confirm came from Jenin. Now you will remember Jenin has been a hot spot and the IDF embarked on a two-day intense counter-terror operation just two months ago. It is believed that Ghen may have prevented a greater catastrophe from taking place. Ghen was 42 years old, married a father of three. He was laid to rest yesterday and his organs have been donated. The Palestinian terrorist responsible was neutralized and later died in hospital. Now it has been a weekend of terror attacks and we now go to what is becoming a very, very difficult issue here in Israel and that is settler violence. Settlers clashed with Palestinians on Friday and uh, Palestinians were throwing rocks and two opened fire shooting two young Palestinians, both of whom have passed away. Now, uh, there are conflicting reports. Settlers were saying that they were only acting in self-defense. But the IDF and security forces have said that they should have called security forces, not called their friends and comrades along to engage in clashes with Palestinians. Five Palestinians related to this incident have been arrested and the two settlers responsible have also been taken into custody. One is the former spokesperson for an MK uh, from the Otsme Yehudit party. Otsme Yehudit is seen as the far right uh, party in the coalition government. It also happens to be National Security Minister Itamar Ben Gavir's party. Now he has also caused controversy by saying that the settlers responsible for shooting the Palestinians deserve medals. Police have expressed their concerns that he is tainting the investigation of the incident. Meanwhile, the IDF spokesperson as well as the head of Shin Bet have warned Netanyahu that ongoing terrorist or extremist violence, or what some would say Jewish terrorism, is fueling an uptick in Palestinian terrorism. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu spoke to Bloomberg News last night. This is the latest in a spate of US-based news services that the Prime Minister has addressed. Speaking about the very, very controversial and contentious judicial reforms, the Prime Minister said that it is likely his coalition government will remake the judicial selection and they will halt the, co the, the rest of the overhauls. Now, the big question Israelis are asking is, can we believe this? Because he said something similar to the Wall Street Journal, where the Prime Minister said that he will throw out the override clause, knowing that Israelis will not uh, uh, take this. He says there's only much the Israeli public are willing to endure. But later told his cabinet the very next day that he will include the override clause, albeit a watered down version. The Prime Minister has faced a lot of criticism in Israel for speaking to American television and not to the Israeli public. Meanwhile, he also addressed the issue of possible Saudi normalization and uh, the Prime Minister said that uh, he would bet on it happening and even if it doesn't happen, that there is certainly an increase in positive activity between the two countries and that he is extremely optimistic. Now, over the weekend, a very, very um, controversial, very uh, hurtful situation took place, uh, including the actor Jamie Foxx. Jamie Foxx took to his social media and tweeted out um, a, a, an image that said, they killed this dude, Jesus, 
what do you think they will do to you? Hashtag fake friends. Now, I must be honest, when it comes to making accusations of anti-Semitism, I, and this is my personal opinion, tend to be very, very cautious that we're not uh, jumping to call everything anti-Semitic. And I took his tweet to mean his friends uh, possibly betraying him. However, however, this is the big but. Jews have been accused of deicide for centuries. This is uh, the accusation of killing Jesus. And this has resulted in us being persecuted and killed for many, many centuries. In fact, uh, just in the last century, the Pope issued a, an edict that stated that Jews are not responsible for the killing of Jesus. Nevertheless, he put this out. It was uh, extremely offensive and, and one could certainly understand why Jews, the Jewish community all around the world was very, very hurt and offended by this. It was also liked by Jennifer Aniston. Now, Jennifer Aniston has long been an ally of the Jewish community. In recent months, when other major stars, social justice warriors, expert virtual signalers were quiet about uh, right-wing or far-right-wing anti-Semitism committed against Jews, Jennifer Aniston was one of the few to take to her social media to speak out against rising anti-Semitism. Now, both have apologized. Jennifer Aniston said, you know, she didn't do it on purpose or intentionally or, 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 or even by mistake. What I think happened was uh, she saw this tweet by Jamie Foxx, didn't think twice, and hit the like button. Jamie Foxx has also apologized profusely for any offense or hurt he has caused the Jewish community. Now I've taken this opportunity to speak to a number of people, including members of the black community, uh, to explain why we as Jews find it offensive. And they have explained to me that uh, from their p uh, perspective, uh, th this kind of saying is not used to point a finger at Jews, but rather uh, it, it is with regards to uh, how they, they would express their betrayal of any friend or anyone who has betrayed them. So it has been a huge learning opportunity about the nuances and the sensitivities of different cultures and I hope that we can apply this when we move forward and when we do see uh, what I believe was extremely, extremely uh, hurtful and irresponsible comments, albeit without the intention of hurting Jews. I hope you all understand uh, where I'm coming from. And our final story, because we really could do, uh, use with some good news, we have been speaking about the growing of ties between Israel and African countries and the president of Zambia and his delegation who was recently in Israel. Well, they've just signed a $100 million uh, contract with Israel for renewable energy. Israel will provide through the Gigawatt project uh, wind and solar powered energy or an energy station that will keep Zambia uh, um, uh, uh, supplied with electricity, something that a neighboring South Africa will, close neighbor, South Africans should take advantage of. And those are our top stories for today. Don't forget to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. If you uh, fancy yourself a lay of the land writer, please be in contact with us via our website. We take all kinds of different views. And if there is anything posted that is a viewpoint that you disagree with, hey, why not write your own article? We'll publish it. We are on Facebook at Lottle's site, on YouTube at The Israel Brief, and on Twitter at Lay of the Land 5. I'm Arlene Marks. And uh, I want to wish you all a wonderful rest of your day and speak to you all again tomorrow.